what you ate last night for dinner? And the night before? Now, unless you're a part of the 5% of vegetarians or vegans that make up the United States' population, I assume you pictured some type of meat on your plate. Let's take a look back a little farther than your dinner two nights ago. Here, I have a couple of friends, Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. While their ancestors may have survived off of herbivorous diets, the development of their brains required more hearty meals, meals consisting of a dinner plate, very similar to the one that came to mind just a moment ago. So while meat did play a necessary role in our own evolution and was critical in the lifestyles of our early ancestors, we may no longer have that same luxury. Let's play a game of spot the difference. The picture on the left depicts the Earth's landscape approximately 2.5 million years ago, when Homo erectus's earliest ancestors were roaming the land, hunting whatever meat they could find. This vast and relatively untouched terrain carried our ancestors to the beginning of their farming endeavors. Following the Ice Age, around 14,000 years ago, the Neolithic Revolution occurred and moved our timeline into an era of agricultural settlements and early civilization. Homo erectus left behind hunting and gathering, and through the innovation of more sophisticated stone tools, they established the beginnings of domestication. Fast forward a couple thousand years, farming has evolved. The simple addition of one word results in what we have now, factory farming. What exactly is factory farming, you might ask? Well, given the changed landscape, the method of obtaining meat seems like it would be slightly different than before doesn't it? Otherwise known as industrial livestock production or intensive animal farming, factory farming has grown to be the most prominent method of meat production and constitutes 99.9 percent .9 of all animal products in the United States alone. Thus, while an agricultural revolution marked the shift from foraging to farming, more recent industrial revolutions have allowed for the true revolutionization of farming, one that we may have to rethink. Our meat-centric diets today not only require heavy-duty assembly lines and large-scale factories to keep up with hungry consumers, but an increasing desire for profit on the producing end has in turn contributed to an earthly disaster, global warming. Now we reach a point where I'd like to make a short disclaimer. I'm not a vegetarian. I join the majority of you who imagined a nicely seasoned piece of meat at the beginning of this talk when asked to think about last night's meal. So, while factory farming is primarily given a negative connotation, one to be associated with animal cruelty or ethical virtues, I will not be focused on either of these throughout the remainder of this talk. Rather, the impacts of climate change are growing ever more detrimental. Between 1990 and 2010, carbon dioxide emissions rose 42 percent. This statistic is just one of many that points to the effects of industrialization. But within this realm of industry, the second largest greenhouse gas contributor is the agricultural industry. Through a multitude of factors, including deforestation, water wastage, and rumen fermentation, factory farming is largely responsible for these greenhouse gas emissions. The Amazon rainforest spans across eight South American countries, making it the largest rainforest in the world. Beginning in the late 1970s, however, cattle ranching established itself as the rainforest's leading cause of destruction. As the general demand for livestock has increased throughout the years, the ranching and livestock industry has become the fastest growing agricultural sector in the world, and today, cattle ranching accounts for 80% of the rainforest deforestation. If this trend continues, we will suffer from consequences, not only at a local level, but globally. The Amazon rainforest alone provides more than 100 billion metric tons of carbon for maintaining the world's climate. And for comparison, that's more than 5 billion times our world's population. In effect, the results of clearing the entire rainforest would be similar to that of the world's population doubling. In addition to requiring an immense amount of land resources, factory farming also necessitates water usage for cleaning their factories. With regard specifically to the meat sector of the agricultural industry, factory farming necessitates massive amounts of water to produce just one pound of meat. 
And how massive is massive exactly? 2,400 gallons. That's more than 50 bathtubs full. All right, now it gets better. This is probably what you'd buy at the grocery store, three pounds of meat. But how much of this do we consume a week, a year? Its effects add up to this and more. But hey, it's okay. We're only part of the problem. Not only are humans a contributor to the causes of global warming, but the animals themselves pose an even greater threat to our environment, as more than 50% of agricultural greenhouse gas emissions are released as direct and indirect byproducts of manure and enteric fermentation. The process of rumen fermentation, by which animals convert food into energy, releases carbon dioxide and methane into our atmosphere. This equation and these terms might seem quite complicated, but to simplify it, this is all you really need to know. This problem, however, is specific to the traditional method of producing meat. You see, take away the animals, take away the fermentation. As our society is becoming increasingly mechanized and advancements are being made in technology, the rise of antibiotics, vaccines, pesticides, and even new transportation routes have all contributed to our capability to mass produce meat for distribution. Knowing this, let's not allow modernization to serve as our excuse for moving forward. Rather, let's allow it to shift us away from eating meat, traditionally. Statistically speaking, somewhere around 5% of the people in this room are consumers of a meat-free diet. If I were to have given this talk 50 years ago, however, this statement would have applied to only 1% of you. But even five years ago, a Harris Poll national survey found the percentage of vegetarian American adults to have remained just under 3.5%. The slow growth of our country's vegetarians has done little to remedy what is a larger global crisis, climate change. The United States currently stands among the top consumers in the meat industry, with consumption rates significantly higher than the rest of the world. Let's take a look at one example. Although pork and beef production has remained relatively constant since 1970, between 1970 and 2018, chicken production soared and is now 3.5 times higher than the world average. Physically requiring less space to raise, chicken has become a popular choice of factory farmers and constitutes 99.9% .9 of all the chicken products we eat today. What's more, in less economically developed countries, let's take Ethiopia as the extreme example, we see an even greater disparity. The United States is consuming poultry meat at almost 100 times more than Ethiopia, emphasizing our own country's accountability in the larger issue of climate change. So, America, as part of the problem, we must also be part of the solution. There are those of you who already choose to drink soy milk over cow's milk for whatever preferential reasons, so why not make a change to other parts of your diet as well? In the past few years, companies like Impossible Burger and Beyond Meat have emerged and marketed their plant-based meat products as the future of protein, requiring less land, less water, and less energy to produce, ultimately releasing 90% fewer greenhouse gas emissions. Made from plants such as peas, soy, wheat, and rice, plant-based meat has developed a reputation for being a more sustainable alternative to traditional meat. Of course, there are obstacles that plant-based meat producers currently face. In order to keep the same nutritional value as conventional meat, products like the Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger patties require much more processing than regular ground beef patties do. Additionally, while the search for new protein sources from materials including fungi and algae suggests possibility for expanding the plant-based meat market, it also implies the difficulty with which manufacturers may need to adjust their processes, all of which are still more expensive to both producers and consumers than traditional meat products. For those of you who, are who may be reluctant to embrace the concept of plant-based meat and propose the valid argument that it is not real meat, the near future brings with it hopes of a promising solution. Another targeted area of study has been the development of animal cell-based meat. Known as clean meat, 
cell-based meat is grown from connective tissue, fat cells, and muscle cells, all of which are grown in the lab. Though still in its early stages, this process has the potential to further transform our roles as consumers of meat. In addition to organizations like the Good Food Institute, which seeks to bring together scientists, entrepreneurs, and even students to contribute to its cause, companies like Memphis Meats and Finless Foods are among the first to experiment with cell-based meat, following a process similar to this. These companies begin by sourcing a small sample of self-renewable cells from their desired source, then providing the necessary nutrients for these cells to grow. Following proliferation, these cells are structured to form muscle and connective tissue in culture before being distributed to producers and consumers alike. By eliminating the need for factory farming, clean meat lives up to its name through both getting rid of the effects of the dirty slaughtering of factory farming, as well as getting rid of the dirty world that we are creating otherwise. The research currently being conducted on self-renewal and differential stem cells in culture has opened up new opportunities for the meat industry in the past few years and presents continued hope for the future. Just a couple of weeks ago, Memphis Meats announced their latest funding round of $161 million, surmounting to a total of over $180 million from investors like SoftBank Group, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, and others. Additionally, the USDA and FDA have agreed to jointly regulate the clean meat industry. In our bacteria and virus-filled world, clean meat provides literally cleaner meat. And even the government has recognized this. Just think about it. If clean meat had been globally implemented in history, it would have been impossible for the avian and swine flu viruses to have been transmitted to humans. In today's world, the prevention of such animal-to-human transmission of viruses could save us. Furthermore, the cultures that these cells are grown in can be modified to include specific genomes or nutrients designed to make the meat richer in vitamins that we may otherwise be lacking, effectively making clean meat a way to address both the preventatives and the possibilities. Whatever it may be, this period of rapid development leads us to reimagine what our future dinner plates may look like what our future world may look like. Available land for agricultural use is finite. That's already been established. But the number of the cells in this world is seemingly infinite. And along with this comes infinite possibilities. As stem cell technology is becoming more accessible and more efficient, it is possible that the future brings with it the potential to produce, to use both cells animal stem cells and plant stem cells in the production of cell-based food. In the next few years, it will be cell-based meat. In the next few decades, will it be cell-based meat and vegetables? While we wait for these answers and imagine our world's future, though, let's not forget, the world isn't waiting. So next time you stop into Dunkin' Donuts, try out their Beyond Sausage breakfast sandwiches. Craving a burger? Burger King's got you and its impossible whoppers have got our climate. Thank you.